Good morning and welcome to The Run-Up. My name is Uchechuku Onodo. And I am Bayo Luwake. It's a pleasure being here. Uh, today we're going to be looking at very important uh, topics. Uh, a, lot, a lot has happened over the weekend, one of which is uh, the UK and the US governments have uh, issued, uh, what is it called now, Mr. Bayer? Security advisory. Advisory to their citizens in Nigeria, saying there's going to be terror attacks, especially in Abuja. Uh, they mentioned, but not limited to uh, government buildings, uh, gatherings and you know asking people generally to remain stay secure and stay safe uh, uh, I have a lot of questions to ask I'm sure mr. Bayo you have a, a lot to say about it mm -hmm. too yeah no definitely um, and I think we'll be having an expert to also help us navigate through the uh, various issues that have arisen because mm -hmm. of the issuance of that uh, security advisory and joining us to have that conversation is our first guest this morning. He is a security expert. I'm talking about Dixon Osaji. Questions has arisen, like you said, Mr. Bayo. Mm. The number one question on my mind is, why is it people from the outside world, I mean, all the way to the West, not even Africans like ourselves, telling us what is happening in our own country, especially security-wise, something mm -hmm. as serious as security? How did we degenerate to that point where people, of course, it's not news that there has been a lot of insecurity and people are not safe. But mm -hmm. when it has come to the point where you have intel, you have knowledge that something like this is going to happen. And then it, it takes somebody from outside mm -hmm. to give us this information. What do you say about that? No, I agree with you entirely. I think it's, uh, I think it's embarrassing um, to have a, a foreign, an embassy, you know, uh, issuing uh, an advisory, even even if the advisory was to their own citizens in our country, okay? Yeah. Uh, we know that given the various platforms of communication that are available now, it will go viral. Mm. So, and this is why it's important for our own security agencies to also interact with Nigerians and to issue uh, uh, advisories or warnings, uh, as the case may be you know, and not now be reacting. Because from what we heard, um, the Department of State Services, mm. DSS, issued a statement yesterday evening, you know, and in the press statement that was issued, they were saying, following inquiries they had been receiving from Nigerians. So I, I think they shouldn't put themselves, you know, in and a situation like this, you know. Uh, they should proactively uh, engage, which I think sometimes they do that, but it needs to be more consistent, and like you said, for something much more serious as this, yes. they should be very proactive and we don't have to wait for okay. a foreign entity to, to, to be alerting us. I think our guest is here with us now. Uh, Mr. Dixon, can you hear me? Good morning. Good morning, I can hear you. All right, uh, you're welcome to the run-up. And we're looking at the security situation. Uh, the UK and the US government has warned of possible terror attacks, uh, especially in Abuja. Uh, what has gone wrong and how did we get to the point where uh, countries from outside now inform us of security situations in our own country, even though the DSS has reacted. But of course, they are reacted off of people's um, um, reaction to you know, whatever it is that the US and the UK government has said. How did we get to the point, degenerate to the point where we are not secure and our, and our security our apparatus is not in our own country are not being proactive? Well, if you ask me that question, I, I will tell you that uh, we don't have value for human lives. Uh, you rightly talked about intelligence uh, information coming from outside uh, uh, of the offshore of this country. Uh, America is an intelligence-driven country. Uh, United Kingdom is an intelligence-driven country. Australia is an intelligence-driven country. Any country that is not intelligence-driven is preparing for failure. Uh, because the reason why we are not getting much of this information is because we just believe in physical security. When we talk about security, there are three components to security. It has to do with people, that is physical, procedures, administrative documentations, then technology. Technology plays a very big role in uh, security. Now, one of the major problems we have is this, is that uh, we don't have an effective counterintelligence uh, components. Uh, you need to go to the enemy camp and all know what they're planning against the state. 
Here, we just wait for attack to take place, then we respond. We, when we respond to security, security is defeated because uh, the whole essence of security is the protection of lives, property, information. Then we go after all this uh, has been lost, then security has been defeated. So what I'm trying to say here in a nutshell is this. The Nigerian government must understand that Nigeria has been in a negative limelight globally, from being the third most affected terrorized nation in the world to the second most terrorized nation in the world. We have not been doing so well at all. This is not good for our image. This is not good for international uh, engagement. This is not good for international businessmen to come and, uh, you know, invest in this country because you need security to carry out your investments. Without security, your investments and your businesses will not flourish. Mm. So if you ask me how did we arrive at this stage, I will tell you because our leaders, our political class from 1999 to 2022 have failed us woefully. They must understand that the reason of governance is to take care of the people and not themselves, their families, and their friends. They are a disappointment to this great nation. Um, sorry, Dixon, you, you, you were saying that uh, the, political, the political elite, but what about the intelligence services? So are you suggesting that the intelligence services do their job, but it's the political elite who, who are failing? Because we are talking about proactively informing Nigerians, alerting Nigerians, you know, to be conscious of uh, evolving security situation. And that uh, we didn't do that, okay? And, and rather it was an embassy probably who issued an advice to his own citizens. And then, of course, this went viral. That is warning people. So why, why is our intelligence service not able to do that? Is All right, it, uh, that's yeah. an intelligent question. Um, when you look at the strategic point of view in policing the states, uh, we have the strategic level, which has to deal with our center of gravity, the government. We have the operational level, and we have the tactical level. The tactical level is the application of the operational mechanism and operational uh, uh, strategies. So here, we have our security agents that are solely responsible in protecting the lives and property of Nigerians. But the relationship between our security agents and politicians is disturbing. Here in Nigeria, you see security boss, police bosses, uh, military officers, soldiers running to politicians for promotions, running to politicians for, for posting, running to politicians to be appointed in their various states. We need to take a departure from that norm. It's very, very wrong. The security agent must understand that the sole priority of, gov of security governance is in their hands. Go to the United States, for example. The FBI has power of autonomy. Go to other countries. Most of the security agents have power of autonomy. How come did they attack Trump, President Trump, a city president of America? It's simply because the security agents are solely responsible in upholding the constitution of that given nation. So if we have an effective security nation, sorry, an effective security agent, that are solely responsible for maintaining and, and, and taking custody of the, our constitution, protecting the territorial integrity of Nigeria, politicians will not mess up with them. So we, I am really going to blame our security agent, but what do you think of a nation where uh, the, the security agent don't have the powers to carry out instruction themselves? So we need a total revamp in our processes. We need a total revamp on how our security agents are being managed now, uh, we've gotten information from the Americans, United Kingdom, and Australia government on an impending attack, uh, flooding, na that's natural disaster. Nigeria is a very blessed nation. We are not suffering from any natural disaster at all. All these years, we have been suffering from man-made disaster, a country at war against itself. Now, a little flo a flood, uh, now flood came around and has taken a lot of human lives, Nigerian lives, which is highly regrettable, noises here and there. What about the man-made disaster? What about those conflict entrepreneurs? What about the conflict distributors that are making the Nigerian place ungovernable? We need to go back to the drawing board and ensure we start holding people accountable because one of the problems we have in Nigeria is accountability from the horizontal plane and vertical plane. So for me, I will also hold our security agents accountable if anything happens to this great nation, Nigeria. When you go into the, um, uh, the world map, Nigeria is the sixth most largest nation in the world. How come 
a country that is the sixth most largest country in the world, a country of over 200 million, have been messed up around with some criminal elements, a pocket of criminal elements, taking over our territory, staying in your government space and making the government space ungovernable. We must go to your government space and make that place ungovernable for them. We must take them out of our territory, except we are not ready. If we are ready, it is achievable. Now, okay, uh, thanks for your perspective, um, uh, Dixon. What, what should be done? I mean, from your vantage point as a, as a security expert, what will be your advice uh, to Nigerians uh, as to how to stay safe, especially in view of this uh, threat? Because even the DSS in its uh, press release has asked Nigerians to provide, to stay alert, to provide information, uh, to contact it. But from your point of view, what will be the tips you want to share uh, with Nigerians as to how to be even safer, especially as well as we begin to go towards the, the end of the year and the festive season? Well, uh, there are many uh, processes you need to take to, to stay safe. And first of all, if we have government telling Nigerians to be very careful and take care of their self and movement, then they should uh, put a halt in taxation. If we can't have Nigerians paying taxes and you are telling them to take care of themselves, then let them put a hot in transaction until they fix the problem that's bedeviling Nigeria. Now, we are suffering from multi dimensional security threats, uh, suffering from terrorism, insurgency, extremists, kidnapping, banditry, and a lot. Just a few days ago, the life of a high profile cleric was tested by some group of assassins and seven Nigerians and police officers pay the supreme price because of these unnecessary elements. So for me, I would advise, first of all, hope owners to carry out an assessment of their surroundings. Know your neighbor, know your movement. What is your neighbor doing? A lot of people that stay in the earth state don't even know their neighbors, don't even know what their neighbors are, are into. You need to carry out an assessment of your environment and ensure that you are not, you are not going to fall prey to criminal activity. You also need to carry out an assessment on your domestic staffs, because we've seen uh, a lot of uh, domestic staff selling out information to criminal elements. So carry out an assessment about uh, the domestic staffs. Ensure you carry out an effective background check on your domestic staff. Then going or moving around, you must also look uh, at the uh, crime, crime rate of the environment. Carry out what we call crime mapping. For example, if Osho is a crime prone area, Carry out a crime mapping in Oshodi and know the time to move around Oshodi and the time not to go to Oshodi. You must carry out assessment of where you are going and the time you are going and the time you're going to come back. When you are driving, you have to make use of your two side mirror. The two side mirrors are there for you to watch your back. Watch your back about a car coming or telling you. Watch your back about an impending attack. Don't just face front driving. Ensure you look at anyone moving around, uh, moving in your back. If you observe that someone is following you and you don't understand that movement, you take right, you take left, you take right, and if they follow you, drive to the nearest police station. Then for church and worship centers, all the chief security officers of church must ensure they carry out an effective risk and vulnerability analysis of the worship centers. Ensure they have a plan, a security plan. In the case of an incident, what do you do? Because I've seen a situation where an attack uh, took place in a church and everybody was running self-scatter. Nobody knows what to do. And that is why all church must mandate their security officers to develop an emergency response plan. Emergency response plan is used to contain an event, emergency or an incident. So when you have such plan, make sure you put that plan in place and test run that plan. They must also look at their parameter fences. They must also carry out a technological approach in the given environment. Because the whole essence of CCTV is meant for two reasons. It's not for decoration. I've seen a lot of people putting CCTV in their office without being manned. When you have CCTV in your office or you have CCTV in your places of worship, somebody must man that CCTV live and direct. The reason why it's manning that CCTV is to contain with crime in progress. If there's a crime in progress, or maybe there's an attack, which is known as crime in progress, you'll be able to call the nearest security post or the nearest security agent for a response, a responsive approach. So that's why CCTV is there. 
the essence is for crime in progress and also for post mortem analysis what went wrong just like when um, the ceo of one tv station was murdered by chidi man some while ago the hotel he could not provide cctv footage how people uh, uh, these uh, killers got into the room of these people no hotel is expected to operate in lagos state without cctv cameras you any facility that have both nigerians or people or pu the public must be subjected to have cctv camera so that they could be able to tell the security agents how this crime were perpetrated in uh crime in progress or after the occasion of crime which has to deal with post-mortem analysis therefore individuals you need to know uh, how you talk uh, how you uh, you know post your profiles on the on your facebook and other social media a lot of people have been attacked you are going to the united kingdom you just post a picture uh you are in birmingham you are eating uh shawarma and uh, pizza and a criminal element that has not even uh, taken a plate of uh, food uh, will target at you so talk less and do not share your information in the public in the social media because the social media is a threat to anybody it's no longer a safer place it's a place where criminals go to fetch information without information your enemy cannot attack you so criminals use the information they have against you to attack you at your home at your place of work or while on transit that is what i can say for now um, Mr. Dixon. So a lot of conversations have come up, uh, people saying that w with the rates that insecurity and crime is rising in the country, that there might not be elections come uh, next year, 2023, or maybe in some quarters. Uh, what is the political implication of this rise in uh, insecurity and crime? Well, the impl political implication is that it's going to give us the negative limelight in the international world. Um, I was speaking to a senior officer uh, in the United States uh, some few months ago, and he told me something that uh, the Nigerians are not ready to protect themselves. The Nigerian leaders are not ready to protect Nigeria. Uh, let me tell you the truth. Security is achievable. Now, the founder of modern-day policing, uh, Sir Robert Peel, in 1829, highlighted some uh, reformative uh, uh, processes. One of his highlights in his policy reform is that the absence of crime best prove the effectiveness of policing. Policing could be the police, could be the military, could be the DSS. Now, the crime rate in Nigeria is on the high rise. The risk implication is on the high rise. Nigerians are highly vulnerable. Nobody can move around without being intimidated or being coerced in its own country. Now, the problem is we need to look, start looking at theory of victory. Our security agents need to start looking at theory of victory. You want to ask me, Dixon, what do you mean by theory of victory? Theory of victory simply implies that when you do this, this is what you get. When you put this in place, this is what you get. Lagos State is one of the most commercialized states in Nigeria. It's so sad and shameful that all the leaders in Lagos State since 1999 have not seen it fit to put a surveillance camera in all the streets of Lagos State. We have the money to do that, but we are unable to do so. Why are we unable to do so? It simply implies, to my own perspective, that we don't care what happens to the poor men. Hence, I am moving around with my escort, I am moving around with my bulletproof cars, and I am moving around without being intimidated or being coerced. So what we need to start looking as a great nation is this. We need to go back to the drawing board and ask ourselves questions. We need to start asking ourselves questions. You know, it's times when we talk about vulnerability analysis. Vulnerability analysis begins with asking questions. Vulnerability analysis simply implies, what is the problem? OK, the problem is terrorism. Then what is the solution? Oh, we projected military might. Another question is, did military might resolve these situations? The answer is no. Then what should we start looking at? We should start looking at multi-dimensional approach because when it comes to security you don't just apply a single approach you apply the three processes of physical security measures which has to do with people technology and processes so when we have an effective administrative processes in place that we govern the operational and tactical processes then we will begin to do things right in the country just imagine for instance when apostle johnson still a man escaped assassination one of the assassins was arrested 
and a serving police officer in the rank of CSP pull out his gun and shot this assassin. What that means is that he has eliminated the evidence. This tells you that if there is a problem with the policing operational uh, 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 standard operational procedures, why would you do that? So we need to start looking at operational procedures. When we look at operational procedures, then we start looking at strat uh, strategic uh, 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 procedures as well. Putting all the strategic approach in place because I must tell you the truth. There is any country in the world that does not prioritize its security with decline from investment, more unemployment, because we are kind of unemployment in Nigeria. Why? A lot of investors are relocating to Ghana. Do you think you want to come and invest your hard earned money in Nigeria? And at the end of the day, one person just kidnap you on the highway and is demanding for 200 million naira. What type of business will you do that will give you 200 million naira within a month or a day? So that is one of the problems we're having. Then our police leaders must also understand that the reason why they swore swore the oath of allegiance is to protect the Nigerian people, not to protect the allies. Because as it is now, the Nigerian policing system is allies protection. They only care about the allies, even though they are doing some policing duties. They need to come back. One of the presidential aspirants has promised that he, when it comes to power, he's going to withdraw all uh, uh, the police officers attached to, uh, to dignitaries. Our police officers need to come back and start doing policing duties. Go to start, we need to start looking at community policing. We need to start looking at state policing. And we need to start looking at federal policing. America today are practicing this three strategic policing system. How, what is the population of America? Nigeria is a population of 250 million, yet we are practicing a centralized policing system. This is an intentional operational error by our state and, and federal government. We need to go back to the drawing board, eliminate this centralized policing system, decentralize the policing system, let's start policing system from the grassroots. Then you and I will be able to talk to the police officers face to face, communicate to them face to face, from the community level to the state level, then to the federal level. Then, as a country, we will begin to experience peace and move around freely without being intimidated by all these unnecessary human beings that are taking the life of human beings like that of chickens. Thank you, Dixon. Actually, I was, I was going to end with a question to you, um, you know, but you already touched about that. And that, that was something to do with the structure of the security apparatus we have, you know, federal versus state. And uh, as well, maybe also to, to some extent, uh, the, the, the local governments. But then I think you already touched on that. Um, but perhaps a passing question would be, what is your model? Because you spoke a lot about the police. What is your suggested model of a domestic intelligence service? You know, what, 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 what model? In a very short, uh, if, you, if, you, if you don't mind, maybe in, in 30, 40 seconds, what would be your suggestion of the best in domestic intelligence service, you know, to, to enhance what the DSS is, is charged with doing. Let's go. Okay, I think uh, the network wouldn't let us conclude with Mr. Dixon, yeah. but he made a lot of uh, points, especially mm -hmm. uh, the last points that he made touching on federal and state policing. I think it was two or three years ago, mm -hmm. uh, the former Deputy Senate President of Nigeria, Senator Ike Kwaramad, was talking a lot about state policing. And I, I, after he left office, I, do, I never heard any, any more conversations about that. And I think that is something that should be looked at. Mr. Dixon is back. You might want to repeat your question. Okay, um, sorry we lost you there temporarily, uh, but just a final question, and if you can react in 30, 40 seconds, what would be your ideal suggested domestic intelligence service? We have the DSS. Uh, how can we make the DSS more efficient? Take them away from the political space. Let them take charge of the Nigerian security agencies, of the Nigerian security uh, situations. Uh, we go to Israel, there is a systematic approach in Israel that um, keeps the Israelites safe. That is what we have in Nigeria and the DSS. And I must confess, the DSS are doing a fantastic job in Nigeria. They are excellent people, but they must take a departure from uh, politics and ensure that the uh, survival of Nigerians are, the priority, are their priorities. So they must have an in-depth analysis of, 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 of intelligence establish a, a counter intelligence department, establish an effective high powered intelligence department, human intelligence, communication intelligence, and other intelligence 
network that will give them information swiftly before these criminal elements come to carry out their ill activities. All right. Thank you so much, Mr. Dixon, for joining this conversation. It was really amazing and enlightening uh, having this conversation with you. We hope to have you again on the run-up, but this is you know, where we end this conversation today. Thank you so Thank much you. for joining us. I appreciate you for having me. You're very welcome. All right. Uh, I don't know. Final... For our guests, is, uh, sorry, for our viewers, is just please be safe, um, especially not just today, but as we go towards the end of the year, be sure. very aware. Um, our guest made some mentioned a couple of things. Many people hire house helps. They do not have any information on the house helps in their houses. Mm -hmm. Many people hire security, so-called security guards. They have absolutely no information. The security guards have no guarantors. Your house helps have no guarantors. You don't know the addresses of your house helps. So if they steal anything from you, or if they endanger your life in any way, you're expecting the police to do a miracle. Yeah. You're expecting the Nigerian police to arrest somebody that you yourself, you have no information for the police. You don't even know the name of the person. Maybe the person has only one name. This person is Charity. And then and the police says, it. Charity what? You say, we don't know. Mm -hmm. How did you get Charity? Somebody brought her for us. From where did they bring her? We don't know. You know so we need to really, you know, Take this seriously, and I think that's part of what uh, Dixon. Uh, Dixon was alluding to. I think we should all come to the point where we understand that security is actually everybody's responsibility. Absolutely. You know, just like you were saying, you don't know the uh, first or the second name of your, of your house help or your security guard. But these are uh, basic things that you should know, you should put in place before you even hire somebody. And then when somebody asks you questions about, imagine that your house help gave out information about whatever business you had doing and then you were attacked. How do you even begin to ask questions when mm -hmm. you don't know the answer to the basic questions? Mm -hmm. Security is everybody's responsibility. When you see something, say something. We're going to take a quick break. Uh, the news will come up at 12 and then when we return, we will continue having this conversation. Stay with us.